You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, your host. I'm the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and I'm doing this show on my own volunteer time to get all our good Democratic candidates on TV. We have Marlon Green, a newcomer to Brockton politics. Welcome. Thank you, Mark. Um, you were here with uh, a debate with your challenger, the current city councilor in Ward um, 3. You're new. Tell us about yourself, your background, and what caused you to run for uh, city council. Sure. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate uh, the time, and I certainly appreciate uh, BCA and the uh, service that they do provide to the other uh, community um, and the voters um, as well. Um, so my name is Marlon Green. Um, I am a uh, clergy member. Um, I've been a member of the clergy for uh, over uh, 15 years. Um, I've worked um, in um, youth ministry um, throughout the city, Boston, uh, and uh, in um, cities in Rhode Island and uh, Connecticut. And I've been doing that for a number of years uh, now. Um, I do work um, full time. I work in healthcare, um, work um, in research as a project manager um, for over uh, 10 years now. Um, I am married. Um, I do have uh, two boys, um, six and 10 years old, and they're um, at the other Kennedy um, School right here in Ward 3. Um, I've spent most of my life serving, uh, serving people, serving um, community, uh, mostly through the uh, faith-based uh, community. Um, but that is really one of my uh, motivations for, uh, for running um, for office. Um, it's an opportunity, uh, it's a call uh, to serve, uh, serve the community um, in a very crucial and critical um, time. Now, Ward 3, Kennedy School, like we talked yes. about. Um, I'm familiar with it. I, I ran for an office, and part of it was Ward 3. It's a nice, nice neighborhood, nice area. Um, what are you hearing from the residents as you're going out and talking to them? I'm sure you're knocking on doors. You probably had coffee hours and stuff like that. What issues are they bringing to you um, that you, you could be of service with? So there's a whole array of issues. Um, that we come across as we uh, talk to residents, as we talk to moms and dads and, uh, and the other children as well. And of course, the uh, major uh, concern is the other uh, crime rate and the crime activity uh, in the other city. Uh, it, it, it amazes me how frustrated uh, residents are and how fearful they are um, because of what we're facing um, where um, crime and safety is concerned. Uh, I'm coming across um, parents, I'm coming across grandparents um, who have lived in the city all their lives and now they're having to consider whether to sell and move someplace else, um, leave their um, childhood home and go um, someplace else um, because of what we are seeing um, where the the, uh, the crime rate is concerned. Another issue that you know, I hear over and over again um, uh, is really around uh, transparency uh, where government is concerned. And I think it's widespread. We see that all throughout the other country as well, where there, um, there's this some issue of how transparent um, government is, how transparent uh, politicians are. Now, Ward 3, I do know that your current counselor has more ward meetings than some of the others do. I, I live in a different ward, and uh, I don't have a lot of ward meetings where I live. Anything you would do differently as a counselor than the current incumbent would do? What, what's your plan to communicate and be transparent? Absolutely. So I, I would certainly uh, uh, take, um, take a different approach uh, with respect to connecting and reaching out to the other residents in Ward 3 where uh, those ward meetings are concerned. I would certainly uh, utilize social media, um, newspapers, as I believe the other current uh, counselor do, uh, but I would go to the extent of uh, 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 utilizing social media more um, and also personally reaching out to, um, to residents. We do a pretty good job during uh, campaign season to knock on doors and connect with um, voters and residents. Uh, and I think that uh, approach needs to continue even after the, uh, the campaign where we're 
actively reaching out and connecting with voters and residents and letting them know um, of these meetings. One thing I found out about when I was running yeah. is I went to some of the churches and some of them let me talk and some of them it was politics it was forbidden to do. I actually got into one church where they don't really do that and they let me in and some people had their feathers ruffled and then other people thought it was a great idea. Is that something you would do? Oh absolutely and that is um, something that I do. I do. Uh, I do appreciate the other work of the church and I believe the faith based uh, community uh, is an asset um, to the other city uh, and I think there is certainly an opportunity to um, to, uh, to partner and to connect with our churches and our uh, faith uh, community more to help to address and remedy some of the issues that we have in the other city. And so I would certainly uh, use my uh, platform, my influence um, as a minister, as a clergy member, um, to further build on relationships with um, churches and pastors and to get in there and to get them more involved and injected in the other community. Now, in the past, there have been some administrations, some mayors, that have really embraced and reached out to the, the faith-based community. If you have someone faith-based, like yourself, it probably works the other way. So you can connect up and get the word out and get absolutely. the message out. Absolutely. Do you talk at all in church about any of the issues of the city? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Um, uh, when I served um, in uh, my local um, church uh, and even in my um, current um, capacity as a um, program um, director where I oversee um, over um, a hundred um, youth groups um, throughout uh, southern New England, Mass, um, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Um, I do speak uh, uh, passionately about the need for uh, Christians and for the other church uh, to be engaged and to be involved um, in the community uh, and to really have a leading voice um, in creating a better atmosphere um, in our um, communities. And so those are things um, that I do um, challenge the church and especially our uh, youth um, to be uh, directly engaged and there is a place for faith and uh, community. It doesn't have to be complete separation of church and state. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, it's interesting every year, every two years when the mm -hmm. council gets sworn into office, you have faith-based folks up front. You might have a, a, a pastor, a rabbi, and a minister all up on the same stage at the same time right. to bless the city officials and wish them well, and then you don't necessarily see them after that. So it would be interesting. Issues that you're hearing out there or issues that you want to bring to the table, some of the big issues in the city. We talked about them during the debate, but I want maybe dig a little deeper with them. The things like taxes, okay? You're a resident, you're a taxpayer, you're a homeowner yes. or, or a rent, okay? Yes. So how do you feel about taxes and too high, too low, just right? Um, there's increases being proposed in, in water rates. What do you think? Well, so uh, we understand that uh, taxes are necessary. You know, this is how we take uh, care of the, uh, the city and provide um, the city uh, services. Um, and taxes are fine um, so long as it's uh, responsible and so long as there is um, there's adequate uh, representation in our government. Um, and so I'm fine, I'm fine with, with um, that, it's, it's, it's certainly uh, necessary. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, reluctant to uh, support um, any increase in taxes um, without any um, improvement in government uh, services or um, an increase in uh, transparency um, where the other uh, city is concerned. Um, in regards to the um, uh, proposed increase, the 30% um, increase for the, um, the water rate, um, I, I would not uh, support that um, at this point, um, nor um, do I think it is the most responsible thing to ask the other residents to do um, at this point in time. And I'm saying that for a number of reasons. Number one, we take into consideration the Aquarius uh, plant. Um, and we know the legal battles with it. We know that the city is spending half a million dollars a month 
um, on this um, plant. And this is not even to provide additional water to the other city or any additional benefit to uh, the, uh, the city. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to uh, support uh, that increase uh, for that uh, reason. Uh, second uh, reason, uh, we know that out there uh, was a contract in place with the other city and with um, Stonehill College, uh, where the other sewage and water is concerned, and they're um, paying a discounted rate. Now, they get a break, um, and they're not residents of the other city. And here we are, here I am, and the person across the street from me, and all my neighbors, here they are, live in the city, pay taxes, work hard, and they don't get a break on their water bill. They don't get a break. Uh, and so to, to, um, to ask uh, uh, residents to want to shoulder more um, at this um, juncture and such a high uh, percentage increase um, is just not a fair thing to ask the other residents um, to do at this point. And so I, I, I would not um, support uh, that increase. So would you, if you were elected to the city council, try to get the city to go after Stonehill College to pay a different rate? Absolutely. I would want them to pay their fair share. Hmm. I want them to pay their fair share. And I've had uh, uh, residents ask, oh, um, they're paying a discounted rate. What is the benefit uh, to the city? What is the benefit to the other residents of the other city? Uh, there's none, really. Um, and this is the old Brockton. This is the old government that we need to completely get rid of where um, uh, deals are being made uh, and it's not in the best interest of the other residents. Let me ask you a question. I'm looking at the slogan on yes. your sign. What do you mean by a healthy Brockton? What does that mean? A healthy Brockton um, is a broad phrase and it takes into account a number of things. Um, it takes into account a safe um, city where there is the uh, perception um, and the reality that people are safe in their uh, neighborhoods. You're safe in your home. You're safe uh, walking on the street with your kids going to the other park. There are job opportunities uh, provided in your city. Um, there's opportunities and parks um, for uh, the kids. Um, that's a safe city. Uh, your streets are clean. Your streets are in, in good condition to, to, um, to drive your cars. There is uh, transparency. Um, there is um, commercial and residential uh, development. Um, city um, services are improved and they're, and they're efficient. Um, that's a healthy um, uh, city. Um, and those are the things that we should be um, thriving for. Education is available, it's accessible um, to all of the residents of the, uh, the city. Uh, kids are in reasonable uh, classes with respect to, um, to size. That's a healthy uh, city. What's interesting is I've had a few candidates that I've interviewed today for school committee, running for school committee, yes. a few candidates for council or council at large. And education keeps coming up. The, 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 the city council approves the school department budget, but as a parent, you're concerned about education. Um, what would you like to see differently with education? I know you, it's not specifically in the purview of the council, but you brought it up. I'm just curious. Well, certainly one of the things that I would like to see uh, differently is um, lower class size. Um, especially in the, uh, the elementary uh, setting. Lower class size for our students um, so that um, teachers can give adequate attention um, to that, that uh, uh, ratio of uh, students and instructional time um, to them. Um, I would like to see um, a greater investment where uh, technology and innovation is concerned. This is the way that we should be going. Um, and, this is, and this is the uh, uh, direction of the future um, of our um, country. So certainly um, uh, some investment in uh, technology and incorporating that uh, more in the, uh, the classroom. And uh, thirdly, I think, I think it's important that there is a long-term uh, building facility uh, strategic plan. 
um, so that our students are being educated on a daily basis um, in a state-of-the-art, comfortable, uh, and safe school building. City, the school committee and the mayor, as chairman of the school committee, right. are contemplating suing the state to bring the resources back to Brockton with the Chapter 70 funding. What do you think about that as a parent? I mean, the, 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 the city monies do pay for legal as well. What do you think about that? Well, Mark, I think, I think in this case there is certainly um, a justification for the, uh, the city's uh, position <coughs> with respect to the other state. Uh, clearly, the other formula is broken, and we need to uh, take a look at it uh, and make some necessary um, changes because uh, as a city, uh, Brockton is losing, and we're at a um, disadvantage. Um, uh, we're uh, continually uh, taking on uh, new uh, students in our uh, system, um, and the state, and it trickles down to the, uh, the city. We are being asked to, um, to take on new immigrants from the other federal uh, government. We have all these mandates uh, coming down from the other federal government, down onto the state and certainly down onto the, um, the districts as well, uh, but no additional resources to carry out those mandates. And so we have all these unfunded mandates. And so I think, I think it is reasonable uh, and I think it's a wise thing that the city go after the state um, and ask for this um, funding uh, formula to um, uh, uh, be adjusted uh, where we are not on the losing on the losing end. Because one of the things you talked about with the technology is that was impacted greatly by not having the resources right. so they had to cut the technology budget rather than level fund it or even increase it right. while they were also laying off personnel. You talked about transparency a couple of times. Why don't you expand upon that a little bit and tell your voters, your potential constituents that you would serve what you mean by that? So I think you know, as a public official, it is important that we're honest and we're straightforward with uh, the residents in what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. We are elected to represent the residents. We are their voice in city government, and they put their faith and their trust in us. And so it is reasonable and incumbent upon us that we're honest with what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Because there is a direct uh, connection to the other residents. What we do, how we do it, and why we do it affects their lives and their families. Do you think that's not the case now? I think there is room for improvement, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Who inspired you to either run for this office or where do you get your inspiration from to serve? Um, I have to credit that to my faith. Um, you know, in, in the words of Jesus Christ, in the scriptures, he says, um, I come not to be served, but to serve. And that was the heart and the passion of Christ, to give, to serve, and to love people. And I've embodied that all my life. Um, I'm originally from on the islands, from uh, Jamaica. And uh, my parents uh, moved us here for a better life. And we found a better life. Um, and that's because many others uh, came before us. Many others served and worked hard before us, and we're reaping uh, the benefits of that. And so it is, it is, it's important and incumbent upon us who've received uh, to give back uh, and to serve uh, selflessly. What does your family think about the run? You, you, you have young children, you have a wife, friends and family. Are you getting encouragement? I'm getting lots of encouragement um, every, every day, lots of encouragement. Um, my f uh, family and my friends, um, they know me as, as a servant, um, and they know me as a big dreamer. Um, I like to go after the impossible. 
um, because I see the bigger picture and things are bigger than myself. Um, and I want to contribute and I want to make a difference. Um, but I do get a lot of encouragement every day uh, from my uh, wife, uh, supports me 100%. My sons who are actively involved in the other campaign and uh, very interested in the, uh, the process and participating. Uh, my parents are um, proud and very encouraging. My uh, siblings are very um, supportive. My uh, church community, uh, very um, supportive and stand strong with me. When you're out talking to the voters, yeah. are you getting encouragement from them? I absolutely am. Yes, I absolutely am. Um, you know, I, it, it, I, um, we don't get a lot of um, um, a lot of uh, candidates in Ward Three. Um, you know, the the seat ran on a post for um, you know a number of times, um, and so uh, people are really happy. Um, and it's refreshing for them to see that there are still uh, residents uh, in Ward 3 who care about the city and care about the other people and the ward um, and, um, and willing to step um, forward um, and to um, try to make a difference. And so I'm getting uh, lots of encouragement, yes. Back to issues. Yes. Proposed power plant for Brockton. Um, it's in litigation. Major litigation. Yes. Mayor announced a settlement as a newcomer, but a resident. For how long have you been in Brockton? I've been in Brockton for uh, about 14 years now. Okay, it's been going on for at least that long. What are your thoughts? Um, I'm I'm not in support of the uh, the power plant, um, and again, um, you know, simply because I am listening to the voice of the residents. I'm listening to the people. Uh, and they're uneasy and uncomfortable with this um, power plant. There are some uh, security and environmental um, concerns. Um, there are certainly um, concerns um, um, about uh, property um, values, um, where the other plant is concerned. Um, and, you know, and still in uh, close proximity to, uh, to residential areas. Um, and so I, I, at this time, I, I would not um, support um, bringing a um, power plant into the other city. It's not, it's not the will of the people at this point. The, we talked about the water rates, yes. and we talked a little bit, but kind of not much, about the desal. There's a proposal to buy it. We talked about that during the debate. Um, if people didn't see the debate, I want to give you another opportunity to explain whatever your position is on the desal. Sure. So for the uh, desal uh, plant, I'm I'm not in support um, of the current deal um, that's uh, being uh, proposed or uh, that is uh, before the uh, city council um, at this point. Um, you know, um, there's a uh, proposed um, purchase price of 88 million dollars for the other plant, and that and that and that certainly. Uh, may not be the final uh, price because we, we, we still have to take into account um, you know, uh, cost for uh, operating the other plant where the other city is concerned. Um, any uh, repairs or any work that needs to be done to uh, bring the plant into um, compliance if there are any issues. Uh, one last report I read, um, the other plant uh, is supposed to uh, produce, I believe, 5 million uh, gallons a day there, up to 3.5. Uh, what would it take to reach that, that uh, 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 quota? So I, I certainly would not um, support the other purchase of that plant um, at this point. On the other hand, I do understand that we're paying um, half a million dollars a month, about $6 million uh, a year on this uh, plant. And at the end of the term, you know, we're probably uh, uh, looking at about $100 million uh, or so. But the other uh, purchase and all, all the associated um, cost of that um, would certainly, I think, um, exceed that uh, $100 million. Um, you know, if, 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 if the, if the other uh, mayor could uh, put a deal to um, together where um, that um, cost is lower. Um, I, 
I don't think the uh, the 88 is uh, fair market uh, value taken into consideration the uh, the condition and the output of the other plant um, right now. But if they could put a deal to them together and can uh, demonstrate and guarantee that the other residents will get a direct benefit from the purchase of this plant, then I'll be uh, somewhat inclined to um, to consider that. But as it stands right now, um, I'm not in support of it. Tons of issues to talk about. Could talk for another half an hour. I just got the five minute sign. So I want to ask you any unique idea or opportunity you would bring to the table as a new voice, and then I'm going to let you have a chance to do a closing statement. Sure. So um, as a uh, new voice, um, I think it is important that we engage our community more in the opportunities and the challenges that we see in the, in the city of Brockton. Um, I think there is an opportunity um, for us to collaborate more. Um, as a clergy member working in the uh, faith-based uh, community um, for, um, for all these years, I see the importance of partnership and uh, collaboration um, to, um, uh, to accomplish um, the other goal or um, the objective. Um, and so the, the, the skill set and the relationship to engage and to bring together uh, different um, sections of the community um, to solve a problem or to address an issue in the other city is something that I do bring to the other table. We have a lot of churches in Brockton, um, uh, hundreds, um, and these are residents who live in the other city. Um, bringing them um, to the other table and creating awareness uh, among the faith-based uh, community um, in the other city is one thing um, that I, I know I can effectively bring uh, to the table. We've had a good conversation. Uh, you can look right at the camera, talk to your constituents, uh, potential constituents, about why Marlon Green and, and November 3rd. So, Mark, uh, once again, thank you. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share and to speak with the other voters uh, today. Um, I hope you had a chance in Ward 3 to, uh, to listen uh, to me, to uh, read on my uh, positions on uh, my website, marlondgreen.com. Um, I'm a resident. I'm a husband. I'm a minister. And I'm a father. And I love this um, city that I live in and that I'm raising my family in. And I want this um, city to be strong, to be healthy, to be uh, progressive and on the cutting edge where we meet the needs of the people and we provide effective community services. I want that for you and for your family. And so on November 3rd, I ask you that as a newcomer, you will give me a chance to be your voice and to advocate for your needs and your family's needs and to make Brockton a healthier city. Thank you, Marlon. Thanks thank for you. being on the show. Appreciate and it. thank you to the viewers for uh, tuning in to Democratically Speaking. We will have more candidates and more coverage of election 2015, but most of all on November 3rd, make sure your voice is heard and you get to the polling places between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. If you don't vote, don't complain. Thanks for watching.